Hi everyone, it's me again, Natalie from National Taiwan University Office of International Affairs. If you joined us yesterday in our introduction to NTU, welcome back. If you're just joining us right now, welcome to the second day of our 2021 online info session for English for international students. So on today's agenda, we have 11 webinars introducing our 11 colleges. This morning in this session, we have the College of Liberal Arts, the College of Law, College of Management, and College of Social Sciences. So let's get started. First on our agenda today is the College of Liberal Arts. They have prepared a short video introducing their departments. After the video, there will be a couple of students who will be sharing their NTU experience with us, and we'll have a Q&A session after that. So feel free to comment any questions you may have in the comment section anytime throughout this webinar. And I'll see you later after the video. The College of Liberal Arts, National Taiwan University, celebrates cross-disciplinary teaching and collaboration. As of 2020, the Arts and Humanities programs are ranked 81st by QS World University Rankings. Home to 14 departments and institutes, the college comprises both humanities and social science subjects. The college actively engages in international collaboration, partnering with 42 universities from 13 countries. Besides English, we also offer around 20 foreign language classes to broaden students' horizons and social sciences. The college strives to cultivate a humanistic spirit in students and help them attain global cultural literacy. The Department of Chinese Literature helps students develop their ability to interpret classical and contemporary literature, aiming to nurture their ability to revitalize our cultural heritage for the future. The Department of Foreign Languages and Literatures offers a comprehensive program in Western literature and culture. Great emphasis is placed on sharpening students' language skills and creativity. The Department of History trains students to think independently and to configure the formation of historical knowledge, aiming to foster social concern and global vision. The Department of Japanese Language and Literature aims to help students acquire Japanese proficiency and an international outlook. The Department of Philosophy helps students examine ideas vigorously, formulate criteria of judgment, and attain a humanistic way of life. The Graduate Institute of Taiwan Literature trains students to investigate literary issues related to Taiwan in a dialectical relationship with East Asia and the rest of the world. The Department of Anthropology leads students to understand the development of human society and culture, and to advocate a respect for cultural differences. The Department of Library and Information Science prepares students to evaluate and disseminate information. Students demonstrate their knowledge by curating exhibitions on a variety of subjects. The Graduate Institute of Linguistics leads the preservation of Taiwanese Aboriginal languages and the promotion of Austronesian language studies. Focus is also placed on linguistic dimensions of neuroscience. The graduate program in translation and interpretation helps students to acquire greater language proficiency while cultivating a multicultural outlook on translation and interpretation. For international students keen on learning Mandarin Chinese, the college provides four programs tailored to distinct needs. The International Chinese Language Program celebrates more than 50 years of excellent tradition. It has maintained a long-term collaboration with top universities in the United States of America. Um, and knowing Chinese helps me engage with people on a deeper level. When people from different political, social backgrounds are all able to come together and use Chinese to communicate, it adds a whole new dimension to the experience. I The Graduate Institute of Art History focuses on Asian, especially Chinese art history, including painting, calligraphy, porcelain, 
architecture, etc. The Department of Drama and Theater educates students on the history of Western and Eastern drama. Every year, they demonstrate their skills in a formal performance. The Graduate Institute of Musicology trains students to conduct interdisciplinary research on music from Eastern and Western traditions. It also invites maestros to hold workshops on Southeast Asian music and dance. Since 1928, the College of Liberal Arts, National Taiwan University, has celebrated a long history of excellent teaching and academic achievements. We welcome you to join us in building a proud future together. See you on campus! <laughs> Hello again and welcome back to Mindless Muted, I'm sorry. And uh, here with me is Michael from the Department of Philosophy. Hi Michael, thanks for joining us today. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience in the Department of Philosophy? Well, um, maybe I should start with uh, why I applied in the first place. Um, so I was born and raised in Taiwan to a Chinese mother and a American father. But uh, I mostly went to school in a Western school, in an American school. And so for most of my life, my schooling was in um, English. Uh, and that was until I graduated from college and I was trying to decide what to do for my future. And that's when I decided, you know, I should really uh, strengthen that atrophied leg, uh, which is Chinese language and culture, uh, because I felt like I was born with these two legs, but I could only use one of them really mm -hmm. well. And so I think NTU afforded me like a really unique opportunity um, to do that sort of linguistic and cultural therapy. Uh, by having a Chinese philosophy program, yeah, and um, yeah, and so so I think that was like the main uh, the main draw for me personally speaking. Uh, but it also really helped when when I was sort of consulting my professors as to what I should do in the future. And uh, I asked three of the professors that I was most familiar with, um, and I laid them I laid out three different um, options. Uh, you know, I want to do this, I want to do this, and then there's this NTU philosophy program, uh, and all three of them unequivocally said you should do that one of course because it matches it matches your story it matches your background and it's really what you want uh, and so I think I think for the for the master's uh, program um, that was really for personal reasons as well as for professional reasons what drew me to the department uh, and then obviously I'm a PhD student now and so so that sort of same thinking also translated uh, to the PhD level, where I also had to decide, you know, once I finished my master's uh, program, who in their right mind would want to do a PhD, you know? Um, someone said it's permanent head damage, and sometimes I agree <laughs> with them, uh, but... I like that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really not for the faith of heart or mind, but um, as I was thinking about it, the same, the same two considerations came into play, which was personal and professional. Um, on a personal level, once I finished my uh, master's program, I realized, you know, um, I have, you know, I have some training. I feel like this, this atrophied leg is now a normal leg. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, I can walk around, but I still feel, I still didn't feel like I could do independent research in Chinese mm -hmm. without a professor helping me along the way to so sort of take me by the hand. Um, and so that, that's one of the personal reasons uh, or the strong personal reason that I had for applying for the PhD program in Chinese philosophy. Um, but it also really helped that uh, for my master's thesis defense, I got, um, I think, would be the top bracket of top marks, um, as well as when I was applying for um, the, the PhD program, I ended up getting a scholarship. So I was like, that's great. I don't have to pay to learn. Yeah, yeah. Other people pay me to learn. And I think that that was, that was, but the reason I mentioned that is because that was a confirmation, professionally speaking, that this is a path that suits your strengths. Instead of just being like, oh, I'm so personally it's motivated. An acknowledgement. Right, right. The world acknowledges you through the scholarship. Right. Right. Because otherwise, you know, you might be really interested in attending NTU philosophy <laughs> department, but they might not want you. Like, mm, that, no, mm, no. Right, right. It's like, oh, good, good idea, but you might be off, you might be better off doing something else. And so so for me, that that was like um, 
from a MA and a PhD perspective, those were the two, the two, um, I guess, stages and, and the main considerations that came into play. Um, and another thing that uh, might be uh, useful to hear, I, I guess, would be the family aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, the, for the MA portion, I actually initially was like, I joked with my mom. I said, you know, I should really consider doing this Chinese philosophy thing at NTU as oh, a joke. Take it. And she was like, yeah, you should. I was like, oh, no, this sounds really hard. Because, you know, up until then, all my training had been in English primarily. Mm -hmm. And so, so for her to take that seriously, I think, I think it meant a lot in retrospect because I realized at the time that she could see something that I couldn't. Um, she could dream a dream, in essence, uh, that I wasn't able to do so yet. And, and that really helped because sometimes your family can see things more clearly than you can. Um, and that also worked, the family aspect also played into. Family support is indeed very. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really important too. Also, um, you realize how important it is once you get to like the PhD stage where I was. <laughs> where you're going to face permanent headbands. Exactly. So. It's like you got to have people who stick with you all the way. Support group. Right. But, but for me, because I have three older siblings, um, I, and all three of them are outside of Taiwan, um, oh. but I'm really close mm -hmm. with my parents. I'm the only remaining <laughs> unmarried um child in my family and so that was an important consideration um as i was debating what to do for my, my next step at the phd program and that that was i guess the third reason other than personal and professional reasons uh for me for me staying here and i'm, I'm glad i got in <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh uh i was what was i gonna ask okay i wrote it right here <laughs> Uh, did you know how to speak Mandarin before you came, before you came? How is your Mandarin right now? Was this a cultural language barrier for you? Um, well, I guess if you tune in tomorrow to the Chinese session, you'll know how good my Mandarin is. Because oh. <laughs> I'll also be speaking there. <laughs> but um, you can make the judgment for yourself. But as for me, um, I, I was born in Taiwan and raised in Chinese speaking circles. Ah. Um, but I never officially learned reading and writing until sixth grade. Um, and I had three years of, I guess, official schooling where I, I, <laughs> I in three years, learned uh, first grade through sixth grade Chinese. Um, and then so, so I, have a lot, I had a lot of holes coming in, um, but, but I, I worked on it a lot because I was, I guess I was very personally motivated to do so. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of difficult because I think that reading and writing is more difficult for Chinese. Yeah. The I mean, characters are fairly more complicated. Right, because you can't really sound things out like this is like you know you, you can't really do that like with you, as you can with English like even if you don't know what the word means you can at least you can still guess well. sometimes there are like um similar characters usually have similar sounds yeah but you have to know a certain amount in order to get there but but it's it's not impossible it just does take a lot of work and and support from other people mm -hmm. so you started your journey at NCU from the master's programs. Mm -hmm. Did you take any perhaps classes that you think really made an impact? Um, well, I think that probably the most, the most, uh, the class that stands out to me the most was actually the one that I designed myself with the help you of a professor. Class? Yeah, like uh, it was like an independent study that I designed along with a professor. Um, it was during my PhD uh, program in the first two years or so and could you, could you tell us more about that i'm like really oh. interested as to how you would have this opportunity to design your own class well there's in the philosophy department there's a an option called independent research i believe um and it basically amounts to it's one credit um but you can you can pick what you choose uh or you, you can choose what you want to do your research on mm -hmm. uh and you have to have one professor work with you um, and I, I did it on conceptual metaphor theory and Zhuangzi um, to sort of see the overlap between them, and and we we did a we did a sort of combination of um, classical text study as well as secondary literature review. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Okay, I see that uh, Wendy is on line with us. Could we please have Wendy on our screen? Hi, guys. Uh, Hi, Wendy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the bus right now. <laughs> I'm about to Thank go to Taiwan. Thank you for joining us today in our webinar. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad to join you guys. 
So um, what have you guys been talking about? We were talking about Michael's design, the class that he designed along with his professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard a little well, bit about that. Hear but about like, you. Huh? Sorry. What did you say? We, we want to hear about you. We talked a lot okay. about Michael just now. I'm very so, curious. I heard that you're actually you actually applied to uh, psychology. Yeah, I applied to psychology. Psychology science, and yet here we are in the webinar of the yes. College of Liberal Arts. So yeah, so I was always interested in um, literature, but then I never had the opportunity to actually take it like as a major because uh, the stereotypical. Asian parents thinking that like literature is not really like a, a way to earn money but then I really don't think so I really I'm really interested in like literature and I've been taking a lot of classes regarding literature because it's so amazing the teachers one thing I have to say about NTU is that the teachers put so much effort into their um, teaching materials and it's really admirable. Like you don't see a lot of professors doing that outside. I hear my friends complaining all the time um, outside of Taiwan, like in the U.S. or something, that they're talking about, you know, their professors are not like taking care of them enough. But you really don't have a problem like that in this school because the teachers are so great. And yeah, basically, that's. And also, um, I just want to say for those people who's like thinking about coming into NTU, like I want to tell you guys that like, you know, it's, I did not expect to have such a good time in Taiwan. Like I did not expect this. Like I was expecting having, like being miserable actually. Uh, but actually I met a lot of friendly people. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was expecting to go to the U.S. for school, but then the thing is, like, I was actually really, actually kind of, I'm sorry to say this, but I was actually kind of disappointed when my parents told me to come here, but it turned out to be so much better because, like, I did not expect to meet such great people, learn so many things, and learn about this culture, and also, like, the food here is, like, so cheap and so great. So that's another bonus. Very affordable. Yeah. But despite yeah. the situation, it mm -hmm. NTU really provides a very pioneering environment. Yeah. Yeah, the people here are extremely friendly. They're very, very hardworking. The local students and the international students, they're very, very hardworking. And they try to meet every demand that the classes give. And some of the classes in literature classes it actually it's so much material but the thing is everybody puts so much effort in it and i think that's really really great i think that's great yeah okay thank you wendy for sharing with us is I do, I do think the, the point about um, professors is quite interesting because mm -hmm. I, I think for, for a lot of maybe like science majors, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can ask like what is the most important resource uh -huh. to, to, to the college. And it's only recently that I found, especially for humanities, it's the professors because they've been, they've gotten so much training and they put all their training into their teaching, into their research. Um, and so, so I used to think that like, Oh, I'm really stupid for going to my professor and needing to go to my professor to ask all these questions. But then I realized as I did that more and more, my professor said, that's actually really smart. It's really wise. Um, it's really wise to ask for mm -hmm. help and to ask about what you don't know. Right. So I think especially for the humanities majors, it's um, your professors are really the best resource you can have. Okay. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's move on to our Q&A session, shall we? Um, I would like to I would like to invite uh, Professor Sherry Lee from the Department of Foreign Languages and Literatures to join us. Uh, you can perhaps sit here. And we have the screen here and okay. also there. Thank you. And we have the comments. You can read the comments okay. section here, and you can even tap on it to show okay. it. Okay. Sure. Hi. 
And uh, Michael can also help me. Uh, <laughs> yes. Maybe you can direct us to which question yeah. Which question we would you like to? Okay, maybe very this one. Maybe okay. All right. Uh, I'm from the Department of Foreign Languages and Literatures, but uh, I'll answer the questions as best as I can. Uh, our Chinese department does have special. Uh, actually, they have a special whole class of uh, international students. Some are here just to learn the language, but some are here also to get a degree. So, so mm -hmm. there is an international program for Chinese literature if you're interested. Uh, of course, uh, we we believe we are we have the best Chinese uh, literature <laughs> professor in the whole world. So it's a very strong program, and uh, you 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 will have a lot of international fellow students here. All right, you, thank you. you. Let's take the bottom. Okay, LCM. Um, so the question is, hi, I'd like to know if there's any language requirements for the program in College of Liberal Arts, because my Chinese is not that well, but I'm still interested in studying philosophy at NTU. Um, so specifically to the philosophy question, um, I don't believe there's a, a language requirement, but you are asked to write like a personal statement, handwritten in Chinese. Um, and so, so I think I think the maybe the best way to to sort of go about seeing if it's a good fit is to contact professors and to sort of get a sense um, if you can to to even visit beforehand or, or call them maybe with COVID restrictions um, call them and and maybe have a conversation in Chinese um, discuss you know what what you want what you don't want sort of where you're at um, as for me my Chinese was probably I mean maybe like high school level honestly when I was coming in there was a lot of holes. But um, I think if you have the if you have the sort of vision for it, um, it's possible. But you'd want to make sure that it's a good fit. That's what I would say. Okay, let me take the question on scholarship. All right. I, yes, I believe this is a, a question a lot of students are concerned about. So I actually have the uh, the scholarship program with me right here. Okay, so uh, the Lib the College of Liberal Arts does offer their own scholarship for international students. Uh, we offer uh, 15, okay, 15 scholarships to uh, undergraduate students. That would be uh, 30,000 NT every year. And for master's students, there are uh, three uh, quotas. Uh, that would be uh, $10,000 uh, $10, every month, uh, That would, and that would be 10 months per year. Uh, for PhD students, there are uh, two, and uh, that would be $20,000 per month uh, for 10, again, 10 months per year. And uh, yeah, you can apply. Uh, th there will be a form, of course, and uh, some kind of uh, information about your financial situation. Uh, so you can you can uh, consult our website. Okay, I believe you'll see that on the College of Liberal Arts website. Okay, and uh, I, there's one on foreign, e language. foreign languages. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I think we the numbers. I don't, we offer a lot of second foreign language uh, classes. Uh, the whole college has like. 24 different uh, second foreign languages. <laughs> Did you name a few, Brad? Uh, well, in the in our department, we have, of course, the you know the the the, the majors: French, Spanish, uh, German, and then uh, po 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 Polish and uh, Arabic, ancient okay. Greek, Latin. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I can't, yeah, uh, Dutch, Dutch. It's going to be kind of difficult yeah, to list right. out all the Yeah, right, more. Turkish, okay, so, yeah, Portuguese, yeah, so, uh, and then the, uh, the, there is, of course, over at the uh, our language center, they have, we have a Japanese department, and over at the language center, there's Thai, and uh, I believe there's, uh, Vietnamese, okay, so, so, and, and also, of course, over at the uh, philosophy department, they have Sanskrit, right? Yes. <laughs> and the Chinese department has uh, 
some of the old ancient, yeah, sorry, uh, <laughs> dialects. Okay, oh, Chinese yeah. dialects. You just use some more Taiwanese here. Yes, yeah. right. So, so a lot we, we offer a lot, and uh, in our department, you have to take at least two years of any of these languages. So, of course, you can take more. Uh, our we open our classes to the whole university, so so you will have a lot of fellow students in your classes. Yeah. Yes, I actually took a couple of foreign languages. Oh, in, in my time at NCU. <laughs> Can you still speak them? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I do sometimes still go to language exchanges around oh, the campus. Okay. There are some language exchanges around the campus. Okay. Uh, let, let me perhaps answer this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have Daniel Chen asking, is there any in-campus accommodation? Yes, there is in-campus accommodation. We have... Um, how many we have i think around 11 dorms and is it guaranteed for international students and overseas chinese students we, you guys are prior, prioritized for on-campus accommodation so that should not be a problem and what would the cost for a semester be from memory i would say we have prince dorms prince houses and general dorms prince houses are like a little bit more fancy ish and they cost around 170 to 260 USD per month, I think, I remember. And for general dorms, there are twin rooms or quad rooms, and they range to about 260 to 430 US dollars per semester. And uh, I actually explained this yesterday in our introduction to NTU, and so you can go to yesterday's live broadcast, live stream on YouTube, and you can rewatch it and there should be more information on there or you can also visit our website at oia.ncu.edu.tw for more information and that is i think all of our questions mm -hmm. let's perhaps address uh, nathan thank you nathan <laughs> <laughs> we're very happy that you like this program okay and so anything else you guys would like to add? Um, I, I just, I guess, well, well, you're of course more than welcome to apply to our department. Uh, we have close to 25% foreign faculty. So, uh, oh. yeah, so, so really you can, you know, go through our program relying mm -hmm. on your English if, you know, if you're not that mm -hmm. uh, confident of your Chinese yet. Although I think it's a great opportunity to learn Chinese while you're here and even maybe some of the dialects. Yes. So, yes. so if you're interested in language research, actually linguistics, uh, also we have a very strong uh, linguistics program, not in our department, but the Graduate Institute of Linguistics, mm -hmm. and they, they have a very strong program in not only uh, Chinese, Taiwanese, you know, uh, indigenous languages, but also Southeast Asian, you know, uh, studies. And it's, uh, the same goes, I guess, with our arts program uh, we have a very strong connection with uh, Southeast Asia so mm -hmm. so there it, it's you know it's it's Taiwan based uh, as a base but really spread out to all uh, Eastern Asian regions yeah mm -hmm. oh, thank you uh, our time is somewhat oh, up. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. but we have like a few extra questions would you like to perhaps answer one last question mm -hmm. before we end okay. uh, so. Um, maybe the first or the third. The first or the you can choose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know that I'd be able to. Oh, some of the programs I guess would be more more. Do you want to? Uh, I I'm not very oh, okay. informed. Okay. That's good. Can I contribute that's not for us? Okay. Yeah. So it's, I it's internship, okay. Yeah. Yeah, internship. Okay. Uh, Do you have any internship program? Um. Well, in the philosophy department. Uh, there's much more of an emphasis on the languages, um, the ancient languages, especially in the Chinese philosophy side. Um, and so usually with philosophy, there's not that much internship opportunities, although of late, um, I believe uh, our our department has begun a like children's philosophy um, wing, I guess. I don't I don't quite know organization. Um, and so so there, there are some some sort of specific um i guess internship like things working opportunities associated with the philosophy department as of recently okay um, okay that, uh, should, Let, uh, yeah, okay, yeah 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 let's yeah, wrap yeah. it up yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, thank you, Professor Sherry Lee, for joining us today. And thank you, Michael, for sharing. We'll see you later in our next webinar.
Hi again, welcome back. Next on our agenda is the College of Law. They have prepared a video introducing their international students in who are currently studying in NTU. And I'll see you once more after the video. My experience at uh, NTU was fantastic. Uh, first, the professors are international. We have international professors at the law school uh, who studied in the United States, Germany, uh, Japan. So they had an international perspective. Uh, and you can see that international perspective in their teaching. Uh, so I was able to uh, learn a lot from their international perspective. ค่ะก็เอ่อคณะนิติศาสตร์ของไทยตาจะมีคอร์สให้เลือกเอ่อเป็นอาจารย์ที่มาจากอเมริกาซึ่งจริงๆเราเนี่ยจะมาจากหลายประเทศเช่นอเมริกาเอ่อเยอรมันญี่ปุ่นหรือว่าบางทีก
生徒たちとの交流も含めた活動が行われています。The experience of teaching here has been, I think, the most exciting experience, the best experience, teaching experience that I can remember ever having. Thank you for joining the competition and for getting to know the law of the law. Because, of course, this is a very different part of the law of the law of the law of the law of the law. 可以学习到世界各国顶尖的法律系所学生对法律议题的不同见解，同时也获得可以实际参访 WTO 社与日内瓦总部的机会。근데지금대만에많은사람들이이제한국을좋아하고이제한국기업이여기와서발전할기회가굉장히많은데어만약에대만에서법을배운다면대만의역사도이해할뿐만아니라대만의이제사회분위기도알게되면서이제대만에서일할수있는기회가굉장히많아진다고저는생각을해서어많은한국친구들이대만에와서법을배우는거에좋다고생각을합니다 I realized that my degree at uh, NTU uh, helped me in the job market because the world we live in today, the job market almost requires an international uh, experience. Um, Maybe not necessarily international education, but an international perspective that my experience at NTU provided. You've got patient centered standards and you've got physician standards. Hi, Dad. You can use Taiwan's global team to change your different countries' value system. The Taiwan Law School is a very good example. National Taiwan University College of Law is the leading law school in Asia. The Taiwan College of Law is the leading law school. In Asia, and it has world-renowned experts leading its teaching and the research to equip you with the skills and the knowledge needed to create an impact on the world. Alumni of NTU Law include successful legal professionals and the leaders across a huge range of sectors. If you want to work alongside with students who are motivated and like the challenge. Or if you want to experience Taiwan's rich culture and a vibrant democratic life, I highly recommend you to come to NTU Law to study. NTU Law is a very special place for students who are interested in learning the law of the land and the law of the land. If you are interested in NTU Law, you will be able to learn the law of the land and the law of the land. Taiwan University has been admitted to the law of the land and the law. 最も良い法律学の教育を受けることができました。การเรียนที่ NTU ค่ะก็ทําให้เราสามารถในความรู้ที่ได้ไปปรับใช้ในขอบเขตที่ค่อนข้างที่จะกว้างไกลขึ้นแล้วก็ทําให้ความรู้ของเราค่อนข้างมีความเป็นสากลมากขึ้นขึ้นค่ะ。早上台大法律学院我可以获得与全球竞争嘅优势能力。The National Taiwan University has a chance to become Vietnam an ecclesiastical year and then get a positive outlook with the house. Welcome to National Taiwan University College of Law. Your first choice. Hi again. For those of you who are watching the live stream, feel free to comment any questions you have in the comment section so we can address them during our Q&A session later. And as you can see here, to sorry, this side, we have our college. Of law students, hi. Hi, Nikki, and、uh, hi everyone. I'm Anthony, and I'm Sandy. Hi, so we're Anthony. both. Hi, Sandy.、Um, hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, we're both currently、uh, graduate students in NTU Law, and we've also spent our four years in college in NTU Law. So we hope to provide you with the、um, like our own experience of how it's like to be a student in NTU Law. Yes, and to be objective,、uh, we are so glad to invite our special guest, Shasina. Let's go. What are we doing? Okay. Anyhow. Okay. okay.、Um, okay. Sorry for being okay, so. <laughs> sorry for being a bit chaotic、yes. here. So um, so we're having Shan today with us. Uh, since uh, Shan is Shan is our Shan was our classmate during college, and uh, he's an international student. He's、yes. from Canada. So hi, Shan. 
Yeah, so hey, hi everyone. I'm the uh, international student representative here. And uh, as mentioned, I'm from Victoria, BC, Canada. And yeah, so what are the questions you have for me? Right, okay. so actually, we've yeah. prepared some topics to talk about today. And of course, if you have any further questions, you are free to ask uh, during the Q&A session. And we might answer. <laughs> okay, so the first question for Sean is, um, what makes you gonna um, attend NTU? Oh, what makes me want to come to NTU? Yeah. Uh, there's several reasons, actually. Well, first thing is that I uh, I was kind of dedicated. I was I was a keener, and I kind of know that I wanted to be a lawyer Ooh, since wow. I was like little, maybe twelve. That is so early. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a long story, but long story short, yes. So as well, when I was about to graduate from high school, I learned that um, uh, the law school in Canada are mostly postgraduate studies mm -hmm. and. Clearly, I don't want to waste four years learning something other than law. You're so, so to me, determined. I kind of like, yeah. <laughs> and yes, since law is a uh, bachelor's degree in Taiwan, I kind of just have the opportunity to come back and have a head start in law. Okay. That's, and another thing is that um, it's a great language learning opportunity to me as well. Um, well, as we all know, uh, the, the official language in Taiwan is Mandarin Chinese, okay. and it's kind of hard to not find um, to find somewhere that's not speaking Mandarin at all. Right. So yeah, it's it, it's really easy to immerse into the environment and get better at a new language. Okay. So my question is, um, have you ever learned Chinese uh, before coming to Taiwan? Uh, yes, actually, my parents are both Taiwanese, and uh, we, we we do speak a lot of Mandarin Chinese at home, and they do show me articles and maybe books uh, from time to time. And so yes, I have a uh, basic level of Mandarin speaking and reading, but it wasn't too sufficient in writing. Okay, so do you believe that it's actually required for students who are uh, like who are wanting to enter into law to have a certain level of Chinese proficiency? Yes, that is highly recommended. Well, the first thing to be said is that the entire, well, most of the curricular are taught in Chinese. The professor will be teaching in Chinese, uh, the text will be in Chinese. Um, the criminal codes will be in Chinese. Everything mm -hmm. will be in Chinese. Okay. And what's worse is that um, the grading system usually goes by um, what's it called? There, we will we'll usually have just a midterm or a final exam yes. that is written Chinese, essay writing, no multiple choice question at all. You we, have to write. We all stuff. suffered. We all yes. suffered. Like even local students, we all suffered. Yes, exactly. You have to come up with that much Chinese all written by hand, mm -hmm. and it's 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 really challenging to me. So yeah. That is, well, to me, in my, in my first year, I actually had to carry a dictionary into um, what's it called, into my exams, and just to understand what they're trying to. Goodness, what, what, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know, like, you've been through all these. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Such yeah. a sad story, I'm sorry. Uh, so <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that Chinese is, is very important for an, an international student. So um, besides the language problem, um, were there any academic struggles that uh, you have experienced over the past four years? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, well, well, as a law student, there's a lot of reading and writing articles and maybe texts and, but I think that's a pretty general question. Um, it's not just for international students only. It, even if you're locals, you have to spend Indeed. a lot of time. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. Like practicing instruments. Like you have to practice 40, 40 hours a day. You have to study 40 <laughs> hours a day. I wish I had 40 hours a day. Just we like all wish. Sandy. But well. yeah. The, so um, yeah. Uh, where was I? And it's like, how, how, how did you get to solve all these struggles? Oh, yes. Um, well, to me, usually I just I just study. And another thing is that you can pretty much just ask whoever um, that's taking the same course as you are. Mm -hmm. You just shoot a message, be like, "Hey, do you know? There, do you know? I heard about this homework? Do you know that there's this question? There's this, what do you what do you think about it?" Okay. And as far as I know, most well, most of my classmates are pretty friendly, and they'll just mm -hmm. tell you what they think and maybe help you out with it. Okay. Yeah, right. So are, are there any solutions to oh, actually, other, this problem? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, speaking of which, um, I believe that there's a uh, official, um, what's it called, peer tutoring session that yeah, is provided yeah, yeah. by the, um, what's it called, uh, the faculty. The and faculty I think Sandy here team. is actually yes, one of the tutors, Sandy. isn't it? Well, how do yes, you I was. That? So, right. Um, I was involved in doing the tutoring back in college. Um, I was teaching the general principles of criminal law. 
So basically for each mandatory course, there will be like two to three groups of this peer tutoring, depends on how many professors are lecturing the course. Since you know, like different academics could have very different point of views concerning one issue. So it's better that someone, like you get to have someone to tell you not only about how to prepare for the exams, but also the emphasis in every lecturer's philosophy. And um, uh, these tutors, like me, are normally your seniors in undergrad, but I know sometimes there are also uh, like graduate students who who has already passed like the bar exam. So it's actually a very great access to uh, learn from them of how to solve or think when encountering these like legal issue and um, like how to do essay questions. This is so important. I, I still don't know how to yeah. do essay questions. <laughs> so this kind of um, peer tutoring sessions are arranged by the faculty official. And I believe that if there are any other courses, like other than the mandatory courses, that the students are in need of such assistance, the, of, the office is always glad to help. So you just go to them directly and um, they'll think of something. Plus, besides, <coughs> besides learning from the seniors, um, I think our faculty, like Sean has mentioned, um, really has this kind of environment or say atmosphere of that um, everyone's very willing to discuss together right Anthony? yes and i think that uh, one of the characteristics of the until law student is uh, that we love to discuss with others uh, for example and i have attended a study group and mm -hmm. uh, before we started the leader will, uh, would have chose uh, one or two uh, cases and each member of study group uh, has to write down your opinion and compare the different uh, opinions between the course and the theories. And during a section, uh, we have to share our opinions to others. And also we can learn a lot from receiving different pers perspectives. So um, for me, it's a good way to learn law. And undoubtedly, uh, I think it's a culture of until law. Yes. Right. So I think we've done enough with the academic parts. Yes. So let's so. talk about something interesting, OK? Interesting. <laughs> For... OK, so maybe we'll start from Sean. Right? So Sean, how was your extracurricular career, career in yeah. college? Um, <laughs> uh, I like how you're using the term career, because <laughs> I actually spend most of the time outside of working faculty, just mm -hmm. doing my own stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing to be mentioned is that uh, there's actually a ridiculous amount of um, well, school right. clubs. Right around here. Um, there's literally anything you can think of. Anything. Anime, um, bartending, wow. capoeira, literally anything you're interested in. Mm -hmm. There's some. There's a whole group of people that are also interested in the same thing as you are. And uh, me, myself, I'm more like a, a I'm an athlete, right, kind of. Right, you could see, like, without <laughs> yes. mentioning. John Cena. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, well, well I, I was the uh, vice captain of the uh, varsity, varsity rugby team. Yeah. And wow. um, I kind of spent every day practicing with my every so impressive. Most mostly every day. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's it's really fun. There's actually a lot more um, competitive teams on uh, on campus, mm -hmm. and you can usually see them training all the time. You just have to walk around the school, and there's someone jogging around. It's 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 a really good atmosphere mm -hmm. to me, at okay. least. And actually, uh, speaking of sports teams, there um, I believe there are a few from the faculty. Yeah. Yes, the uh, isn't it? Yes, yes. And for me, um, I think that in our faculty, uh, there are many sporting teams right, right. like uh, basketball, basketball. So, like uh, badminton uh, and table tennis, they are very popular. Yes, and for right. me, I have attended a volleyball <laughs> team. Oh, yes, volleyball. I like spiking. <laughs> so I think that um, yep. this is the most impressive um, life. Like yes, in my memories. four years in NTU. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, there are actually a lot of intramural competitions that you can participate in, and there's actually another thing. Uh, oh, what's it called? There is a um, uh, th there's a conference where you can attend to, which is like contributed by all sorts of different law schools from uh, from around the country. Oh, right. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. and right, right. we would just compete against each other, and yeah, there's a lot. There are a lot of games to play if you're interested. Right, yes. and so other than that, in terms of like the environment of where the campus is located, the faculty is located. We have quite some nice bars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, there okay. are clubs, there are bars around our school, and that's usually where the international student hang out. Uh, yeah, right. you can see a whole bunch of uh, foreigners mm -hmm. over there. And uh, if you want to chill and just have a good drink, have a good time, that's always somewhere you can pop by. Well, for okay. me, I hang out in like dessert shops. There are quite some very good dessert shops around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 
I believe okay. she has. She actually has a pop list if you're ever interested. Um, I do. Yeah, yeah shoot I her do. a message or something. <laughs> okay. Right. I think we'll we'll pause here. We'll pause here, and then uh, I think we'll save some time for like your real questions in the Q and A session. So maybe we'll hand over to, to Natalie. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay, so uh, let's move on to our Q and A session. Well, we only have one question here. So would you like guys want like would you guys like to address that? It's from LCM. Compared to Western what? universities, okay. what are some of the strengths studying in NTU? What do you guys think? Comforts. Compared to Western universities, what do you think are some of the strengths of studying in NTU? Well, I think the first one would be being able to learn Chinese. Yeah, that's that's the that's the additional part. But like the the language, of course, is like the basic. But I think because like um, this um, LCM has already <laughs> addressed like because we are a a school in an, an Asian country, so of course we get to compare. We have more opportunities to compare like like civil law or common law systems. I think that's the best part. And um, I I don't know like. Sean? Well, per, well, to me, um, the first thing I have to mention is that Taiwan is in a very, um, it has a very unique um, political um, status. Uh, yeah, status. Oh, in terms of international law. Mm -hmm. So, if you're interested in this, the, uh, the, this is probably the best place, the best place you can uh, you can mm -hmm. you can study and analyze through these cases. Mm -hmm. And yes, and um, another thing is that um, Taiwan has this very unique culture and history we have been well we have been conquered by several different a lot of different civilizations and it's almost like a mixture of western and eastern cultures mm -hmm. and even the law system we had oh, what's it called we we did learn from what's it called the germans and the japanese and mm -hmm. even certain law, uh, laws from the uh what's it called from from the anglo-american law mm -hmm. so um by at least to me by studying the taiwanese law you can actually have a glimpse or a com or you can learn how to come well yes it's a better way to compare and, and learn between different systems yes and me. i think the best part is like we really have this very liberal environment in like digging into any issues like so this pet it's probably the best place if you want to have a thorough observation of Asian laws, like because you know, law sometimes it it's it's unable to separate from like the political environment. So we have the we have the like the most liberal environment to get to investigate those yes, issues. Um, right? as a, um, for me, I think that as I mentioned, I think that uh, one of uh, characteristics of anti law students is like to uh, discuss. And uh, for example, um, I think that uh, like uh, um, Taiwan's law jurisdiction uh, okay <laughs> i think that um taiwan is uh, the first country in in asia to uh, to pass the gay marriage so i think um if you study in taiwan i think you can learn a lot of um some um, different opinions or different um like uh, right. okay right it's like i think it's probably the best place to like because you're you are in Asia and you are able to have a closer look of like how how the country surrounding is really thinking about and how their their system of law like how their practices of the law are like and actually we have this like Asian Law Students Association which is very helpful in interacting with different Asian uh, law students around so yeah okay. I think that's it for this question. Yeah, our time is somewhat almost up, so perhaps we could per, uh, choose one last question among the three okay. in the comment section. I think the common might be the internship program. So um, we, we actually have, yes. Sheila, in your college, do you have any internship programs? This one? Yes, yes. So um, we have quite some internship programs, and uh, I don't, I don't think it's limited to just local students. But, but still, yes. like the because if you are to do the internship, then uh, the language proficiency is your like requirement. But there are quite some, like because you get to you get to work in 
uh, I, some, some law firms provide uh, internship spots and also uh, other um, like judicial officials, like government officials, they, they, they fall, and also like courts, they are also provided with some spots for you to like be inquired by the citizens of like uh, whatever legal questions they've encountered. Yes, for and, some uh, in like uh, summer vacation, we can have uh, like a two months of uh, internship in mm -hmm. jury, uh, like the, judicial, the yes, or judicial yuan. They yeah. provided. Uh, also, we have, <coughs> I think, um, aside from the the like the real practicing part, we also have some academic internship opportunities, like in the what's that? The, something Seneca, the the Zhong Yan Yuan. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like in, in some institute institutions that um mainly focused on like academic works. So yeah, there are quite some and maybe you could email email us and we could provide you with more comprehensive information. Yes. yes. Have a little bit of time left. Perhaps one more. This one. Oh. So yes, we've mentioned earlier um like mainly of our of our lectures sure, yes. are all in chinese, chinese. but <coughs> we have we have some like um anglo american law like those courses of course the the textbooks are in english and sometimes our professors might be wanting to lecture in english but we we also have some intensive courses um uh in which we invited uh like international academics like professors from abroad to to be teaching those classes and those are in English and some are some some are in Japanese but the mandatory is if if you are to be a degree student then um you'll have to go through like the the majority of your courses taking is in Chinese right okay the, thank you in Chinese yeah <laughs> the test is also in Chinese mm -hmm. thanks Okay, thank you. Hope hope you're helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks, Sean. And that's Thanks. all for the College of Law. We'll be taking a short break and we'll be returning at 11.20 for the College of Management. Okay. See you then. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye.
I'm studying civil engineering and Taiwan has a good reputation in construction domain. So I wanted to learn about those abilities and skills people are using here. They have Taipei 101, they have complex building all around the country. So I wanted to learn about this, those techniques of construction. And on top of that, I wanted to explore new culture, learn new languages and discover new origin. I'm very happy here at NTU because first of all, talking about the courses I have been taking for those years, I learned to design, I learned to manipulate software. I also even had the opportunity to went to internship. And on top of that, professors, the staff, the classmates here, they're amazing. Everybody take, is taking good care of me and I really appreciate it. And the thing here is like, actually not just talking about the school. When you go outside, people are kind and they teach you Mandarin. And actually you learn a lot. You ask and you learn, that's the fact. And I really love it here. I will definitely recommend my friends and everybody to come and study here in Taiwan. It's a beautiful, safe place to visit ever. And the thing is like, people here are kind and they're taking good care of foreign students. So if you want to try something new, Taiwan is the best place you can visit and try it out. The reasons why I wanted to stay abroad are somewhat unsimilar to those of others. I wanted to experience a better education system, to have a touch of how it is to live abroad, and to seek for opportunities beyond my limited horizon. But what I also really wanted is to put myself into a competitive environment. I hoped while pursuing my bachelor degree, I would be able to master the Chinese language after four years of immersing myself into a natural Chinese speaking society. So I decided to come to Taiwan and study at National Taiwan University. I come from Vietnam as a scholarship student. NTU is arguably the most prestigious university in Taiwan. The content of the lectures taught in NTU is never easy. Together with the extreme competition among the students here, it is totally a huge challenge that I need to get through. It's a good thing that I have friends who will be more than willing to help me. I have professors who will be my invaluable mentors with their rounded knowledge. With the help of these amazing people, I can make my way through the semesters and balance my study and social life. As an international student, of course, you will face hundreds of challenges. So equip yourself with some level of Chinese before coming to Taiwan. That will give you a great start for your journey here. But don't worry if you do not know anything because you are here to ask and to learn. Looking back at the years that I've been studying in Taiwan, I do know that it's totally worth it. Having so many credits every semester, joining a school orchestra and a sport team at the same time, I truly hope that I will make the most out of my time in Taiwan and continue to explore this whole new world. I arrived in Taiwan seven months ago. In the beginning, I was confident with the language used in Taiwan because I have learned two years of Chinese. As soon as I arrived here, I knew I was wrong. The way people talk is way different and faster than my teachers in Germany, but that's why I want to study in Taiwan, to improve my Chinese language skills and get to know Taiwanese culture and people. I came from Germany as an exchange student. Friends of mine had recommended me National Taiwan University. It is located in Taipei and is the best university in Taiwan. Studying at NTU, I take more courses than the average exchange students. I have a chance to meet lots of hardworking and smart students. When I face difficulties, I will try to solve them on my own. But I'm also happy that Taiwanese people are super friendly and helpful for foreigners. Even though the main purpose to go abroad is to study, I believe getting to know people from different cultures and making friends with them is more important than going to class. It helps me get a better understanding of different ways of thinking of other people. After completing my study at NTU, I will go back to Germany to finish my bachelor. For my master, I'm thinking doing it in Asia or somewhere else. But I definitely will be in an international environment with students from all over the world.
How do you make it? How do you achieve your dreams? How to get back in the driver's seat of your life? How do you overcome the odds? Be bold to choose and make your own future. Cultivating elites worldwide to transcend limitations. If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. Researching and developing innovations for global sustainability. Embracing challenges to overcome all odds. Liberal atmosphere allows everyone's unique potential to shine. Rich culture and environment provides convenient lifestyles. Magnificent cultures preserved through the enchanting Oriental Formosa. Taiwan, the best destination for studying abroad. Study in Taiwan. The peak on the sea. The dream with the wing.
Taiwan Hi everyone, welcome back to National Taiwan University Office of International Affairs. Together with us, we have the representatives of College of Management. This is uh, Christy, who will be answering your questions you have in the comment section later in our Q&A session. So really, please feel free to comment any questions you may have in our comment section so we can answer them later. And then this is Andrew, who's from Indonesia, and Jan, who's from Germany. Good morning, everyone. They will be they will be speaking in our student sharing session, which is right now. So, um, Andrew, would you like to go first? Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Andrew Winson. I'm currently a first year master student in the MBA program. Uh, I'm actually from Indonesia, and I came to Taiwan around four and a half years ago to take my undergraduate degree. Uh, back then, I went to a uh, university in Sinju. I was studying power mechanical engineering. And after a few months, around eight months in a U.S. semiconductor company uh, as an, as an uh, engineer, um, I engineering intern, and I realized that being an engineer is not really what I want to do in the future. So uh, I realized that I need to change my career path because I was more interested in the business side of the industry, in uh, project management, and also uh, into investment. So I decided to take my uh, to pursue another degree, which is an MBA, and I chose NTU because I believe uh, NTU is uh, capable enough to give me uh, what I want. And one of the few reasons why NTU is that uh, I think NTU is very diverse in terms of uh, courses and you know, the people. For example, uh, in the courses, uh, NTU itself I think has around more than uh, 50 departments. So I still can take courses from uh, other departments like mechanical or industrial engineering, and also at the same time because I'm interested in, in finance, so I can go to the finance department, I can go take classes there, I get to uh, meet new people there, and also um, I get to also uh, do projects with professors if I want to. And that is very uh, good because in a, in a business school program, you need to uh, have a, a broad understanding towards the industry. So uh, other than that, I also think that um, NTU uh, people is a very, very important resource as it's very diverse. Like, for example, I get to meet Jan from Germany and also from other, other friends from around the world. Uh, that is very important because in the business, I get to understand more culture. I get to understand more, know more people around the world and also uh, build connections throughout the world. So, yeah. And uh, one last thing is that uh, during the pandemic, like uh, most, of my, most of my courses are still in, uh, are still offline, like in class. And, at this age, it's very hard to um, it's very hard to like have an offline class because of the pandemic. But NTU is one of the few places where you can still do that. So I get to I still get to uh, experience the full uh, learning experience. Yeah. So all in all, I think that uh, choosing NTU is a is a good choice for me because it will really boost my career in the future and also uh, it's, it's a very good investment towards my future. Yeah, I think that's all for me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so before we move to Jan, perhaps let's watch College of Management's introduction video. To you know more about NTU College of Management. College of Management was established in 1919 and is the best business school in Taiwan. There are five missions of our college, including social impact, industrial impact, international impact, academic impact, and educational impact. We have five departments, business administration, finance, accounting, international business, and information management. Each of them offers bachelor, master, and PhD programs. And there are three MBA programs available. First, Executive MBA, a part-time program taught in Chinese for top management with more than 10 years of working experience. It is expected to complete the program within two to three years, total 36 credits. Second, Global MBA, a full-time or part-time program taught in English for young talents from around the world with more than two years of working experience. It is suggested to complete the program within one to four years, total 39 credits. And third, EIMBA, a part-time program taught in Chinese 
for entrepreneurs with innovation ambitions. Students may complete the program within two to four years. Total 36 credits. College of Management has been awarded five palms excellence for 10 years. Here is a glance of faculty structure by department and country of faculty educated. Currently, we have 3,800 students studying in College of Management with 55% bachelor students, 41% master students, and 4% PhD students. Speaking of international exchange opportunities, we have established formal academic partnerships with more than 110 partners in 27 countries, forming a strong network of lasting partnership around the world. Annually, there are around 200 exchange opportunities. Showing to you some of our international exchange partners in North America. In Europe, and in Asia. If you are interested in studying dual degree program, here are your options. Top tier universities partnering with us including City University of Hong Kong for bachelor degree, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, University of Pittsburgh, Michigan State University, and Singapore Management University for master degrees. Waseda University for bachelor degree, University of Texas at Dallas, Kyoto University and Peking University for master degree. So how about career development? Career Development Office is here to help. The office provides NTU students and alumni career planning information and career development consultation. Some services including career network development, providing vacancy information and intermediary service. Students are welcome to fully utilize the facilities such as the NTU library, sports facilities, and case study classrooms. Besides, as an e-university, students can take computer course and enjoy distant learning. Moving on to the most exciting campus life. The beautiful NTU campus holds over 400 student associations and clubs with exhibitions and performance from time to time. Besides, Buddy program is available with the aim to help international students to settle down and get to know NTU student life. In order to get an introductory glance of the program, the College of Management will arrange orientation section for all new students. Students are encouraged to join various cultural events and Taiwan exploratory trips. Sports enthusiasts must join the NTU Sports Days and Dragon Ball competition. Drinking and having fun with your classmates are things you can't miss out. GMBA Industry Mentoring Program was organized to connect GMBA students with Taiwan corporations, especially in offering internship and job opportunities. A workshop was arranged to offer useful information to foreign students who plan to stay and work in Taiwan. There are many company business opportunities in the College of Management, all students are welcome to participate in learning about the company structure, products and service, and operation strategy. Students will be invited to participate and assist in international conference in Taiwan. GMBA three-month global management forum offers students practical training and opportunities to interact with representatives from renowned corporations.
And here is the annual Unity Board get its current GMBA students and alumni together for a grand and enjoyable evening. Celebration for a new milestone in life. Alumni will be invited to join gatherings to stay connected. Students volunteered to help those in need in the community. Thank you for watching. years um, in uh, two various industries. Uh, one was... Um, uh, I'm sorry, I think the mic was muted just now, so... <laughs> sorry again. Jan okay. from Germany will be sharing his experiences with us. Okay, second one. Uh, yeah, so thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm a student here at the GMBA program of um, NTU. Um, I am already, already had six years of work experience uh, in two different industries. Uh, the first one was uh, chemical. I worked uh, for the biggest chemical company in the world, BSF, uh, before moving then uh, to a leader in the process automation industry. And um, yeah, what made me come here to uh, Taiwan and uh, specifically to the GMBA program was um, uh, like a good German, I made a long list. I knew I wanted to go to Asia because uh, Asia as a growth region um, uh, was always very interesting and will be very interesting uh, from a career perspective. Um, living here or working here whereas also in Europe and uh, because of that I focused on Asia and they looked at several different uh, countries and their best universities and then based on uh, of course uh, quality, price, um, also uh, like the whole living situation and so on. Um, I applied with several universities and was also accepted in several ones before finally deciding for uh, the NTU here in Taiwan uh, because of its uh, reputation as the best university of Taiwan and also because of its central location in the heart of Taipei. Um, yeah, so how did I end up uh, how did COVID affect me? So for me, it was a bit of a struggle actually to get here uh, because back then uh, was like the height of COVID and uh, it was not so easy to get a visa. However, um, beginning of September last year, I then managed to get one and uh, managed to arrive by uh, end of September, uh, going through two weeks of quarantine, which was an interesting experience. Um, however, uh, I had already two weeks of classes in Germany, which went quite uh, well, I must say and then another two weeks during quarantine, um, which kept me busy. So uh, that was, uh, made the whole journey a lot easier. And yeah, otherwise, um, the life here in Taiwan, uh, as already was mentioned by my colleague Andrew, uh, it's, it's very good. I mean, uh, like uh, there are very, very few piece, uh, places in the world left, uh, like uh, Taiwan right now, where you can move around everywhere. Uh, the only restriction is usually that you have to wear a mask. Uh, and you get your temperature checked every now and then. But I think this is uh, something everyone can live with. And yeah, so um, for uh, as a conclusion, basically, um, after having arrived here and uh, started having started the program, I was really surprised at how fast uh, I was integrated into the whole group. Uh, got to meet students like Andrew. <laughs> We clicked directly, <laughs> yep. uh, and uh, yeah, also of course lots of other students. We already went uh, on several trips, hiking around Taiwan. It's a beautiful country, uh, really worthwhile to explore. So yeah, I was. Um, I don't regret coming here, and very positive experience so far. Thank you. Thanks, Jan, for sharing with us. Uh, let's move on to our Q and A session. Okay, for the Q and A session. Uh, up to now, we have three questions right here. Let's start from Brian's question first. He is asking, is there any marketing course in the College of Management? May I address Andrew to answer the question? Oh yeah, hi, hi Brian, thank you for the question. So uh, marketing is uh, one of the uh, most important uh, core courses in the College of Management. So you get to choose a lot of uh, marketing related course. For example, in my MBA department, we have the 
marketing management as the core course, but if you are interested in marketing even more, uh, we can choose the um, uh, marketing research. And also from the international business department, we have the uh, big data marketing, which is also a very famous course. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, marketing related course uh, in uh, NTUCOM. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay. So we move on to the next question with Diana or Diana. So what are the requirements to, uh, to apply for a dual degree? I would say uh, upon different schools, there will be different requirements. Some require you have working experience, some require you have the uh, uh, language ability. So you have to check first what uh, which school you will, be, uh, you will be applying. So before I can answer your question. So your next question about the scholarship, yes, we do have scholarship, but not from College of Management, but rather it will be com coming from NTU or the uh, Taiwan government. So you can read the scholarship information in on OIA's uh, website for more information. Okay, uh, for Irene's question, the international admission is already started. So if you want to be one of us as an international student, apply as soon as possible because the, the, the deadline of the application will be February 25th, February 25th. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't take your time, hurry up. Take your time. <laughs> okay, and results will be announced on the 16th of April. Okay, so about uh, Shella's question, does NTU provide career development programs bio for internship or work workshops? Yes, we have we do have a career development center in College of Management, but we provide a lot of internships and uh, workshops for students who are interested in working uh, while they are also studying. One another information is that uh, if you want to work uh, while you are, are a student, um, you can apply for a work permit. Student with a, with a work permit can work up to twenty hours per week. So you do not and you do not have a and offer first before you can apply for a work permit. So if you want to start working uh, when you are a student, you can do it. Okay, that's all for all the questions. Mm -hmm. That's all questions I'm ready for now. now. <laughs> okay. Another one came up. Yep, another uh, one came up. We have uh, okay. We have Xin Xin question. Networking and social events are very important in the field of business. So how is it affected by COVID nineteen? Very Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, um, as I mentioned before, uh, basically the only restriction you mainly have is that you have to wear a mask, and that is uh, if you meet in a restaurant, um, you can also take it off, of course, to eat. So uh, basically, it's not affected at all. Uh, there's just like some uh, proper um, temperature checking being done beforehand to make sure that there is no one with a fever there, which would be an indication for COVID. Uh, but otherwise, all events here in Taiwan are still being conducted as usual. Uh, so uh, there's basically no limitation uh, regarding that. OK. Oh, so I wear a mask because my mask is pretty, OK? <laughs> <laughs> it's not because of the pandemic. So about the next question, and you some of plus Asian studies program. Uh, um, I'm not very familiar with the Summer Plus programs. Susan, are you familiar with Summer Plus programs? I think I personally think the Summer Plus program is not from college management, but rather there's some from NTU yes. departments. And that may not be also an OIA program. So if you have any questions, you can write an email to to some to Still to us, we can bring yes, that yes, to, to our IA. department. Okay, this so is Susan from our admissions uh, team, Global Student yeah. Admissions Team. Yes, uh, for the summer program, uh, maybe you can try to contact us, OIS offices, because we provide many NTU plus academy courses, that is for the short term courses. So if you are interested to apply for that, please contact the OIA staff for that. Thank you. Yes, I heard they now have online courses due yes. to COVID. Yes. So you can apply for that too. Yes. And uh, Irene Karina. Hey, back Irene. On. I got your question. So what is what we are looking for international applicants? Um, we are looking for all kinds of international applicants, no matter what your background is, no matter what your level is, come and join us. But if you are asking about GM, uh, the G GPA, 
is GMB, GPA important? We have to ask the two <laughs> here. I mean, it's yes and no at the same time. <laughs> but I, I think that uh, GPA, NTU does not solely look at GPA. It also looks at other uh, criteria. And also, uh, don't be pressured because, for example, if you're not from a business department, don't be pressured. Like, you feel free to apply because, like, uh, most of my friends in the MBA department, some of them are from the theater department, and some of them are from the musical department, some of them from the medical, so a lot of background. So uh, I think, um, so yeah, GPA is not these, the most important thing in the application. That's my opinion, but you agree with that, Christine? Of course, GPA will be one of the concerns, but not all the concerns. Yes, yes. We, have, we have to know your intention while you're applying at, uh, at NTU. Uh, we have to know um, what you think you're applying will bring the benefits to you. For example, if you're applying an accounting degree, for, for example, what do you expect this accounting degree may bring you? So you have to show your intention why you would like such a degree, which is more than just only talking about GPA or work experience or background, whatever. It is a... We, we, we need it to be a very conglomerated or, or integrated um, our job. Sure. Yeah, so also another thing to look at is uh, the calculation of the GPA actually depends on where you're from. So like in, uh, I made that experience. Uh, so in, uh, if I translated my German grade, which weren't amazing, uh, so I, I, I was medium uh, bachelor graduate, uh, uh, I did medium well, I did say like that uh, in my undergraduate. Um, however, yeah, there's also that part where you then, when you have your, if I had my German grades, uh, which completely differently calculates the GPA uh, compared to uh, the Taiwanese system. So um, there's uh, like some mix up. So just because you feel like, ah, uh, this is the best university of Taiwan. Um, and I only had medium grades in my undergraduate. Uh, just apply as well. I also uh, wrote like that and uh, I was still accepted. So uh, I'm, I'm the proof, uh, even when it's with medium grades, you still get it. <laughs> okay. If you put some work into the rest, of course. Yeah. All right, that's all of our questions for right for now. We have our contact information. If you have any more inquiries, you. We have a we have a slide. We have a slide, please. Yes, here it is. Contact information. Christy, would you like to elaborate? Okay. So, uh, if you will be uh, applying to various departments, you should contact the various um, contact person for that department for the most updated and um, accurate information. So, for the um, Business Administration Department, please contact Ms. Fang and Ms. Yao for, for the information. And then for Accounting Department and also the Finance Department. So for International, Depart International Business Department, please contact Ms. Zhang for undergraduate program and P. No, it's. Oh, it's for the International Business Department, I'm sorry for a mistake. For International, they only admit MBA students and PhD students, not undergraduate. So um, please contact Ms. Zhang and Ms. Chen respectively. For Information Management, please contact Ms. Chong and GMB. I here, Chrissy, will be the contact person. Okay. I think that's perhaps all for today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. It's been really awesome. It's been a great honor to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And we'll see you later at 11.50 for the College of Social Sciences. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Next around on our agenda is the College of Social Sciences. Here I would like to invite Professor Min Hua Kwang from the Department of Political Science and a few students. We have Arslan and Sui Jin. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you with us today in our online info session and I'll be back later for the Q&A session. Hello everyone, it's um, Ming Hua Huang from Department of Political Science and National Time University. I also serve the international, uh, the Director of International Affairs at uh, College of Social Science. Today we are very glad to introduce our college to you guys. And um, with me, we have Arslan mm -hmm. from Russia, and we also have Jim from Malaysia. So we are going to uh, start today's intro introductions. Yeah, we were putting our um, PowerPoint slides on, on, on the screen, so, um, um, okay, yeah, uh, see that that's a very beautiful uh, scene from our library. Uh, this building actually was built in, um, uh, uh, in 2014. We have been here for six years and very beautiful views. We have the, I, I, I'm going to say the best library in Taiwan, okay, next. All right, so this is our lineup today. Yeah, it's me and Arsam and also Jim. Okay, um, I I think the first thing here is that I wanted to let you guys know how to find the information of our college and also to help you make up your mind when you make your decision in order to, uh, I mean, to choose the school or department or all the uh, uh, fields. Okay. Um, and we also talk about the location space and also our academic organization, as well as courses, and also graduate requirement, study of both programs and research and applications. Okay, firstly, uh, location-wise, I think we are at the back door of the Tai Da, and mostly people, you know, knows the Gongguan night markets, and that's very, very, uh, you know, prosperous areas. We are at the Back door and it's much much surround and uh, uh, quiet and uh, very beautiful uh, places and it's in the intersection of the Xinghai and the Fuxing South Road. We have a uh, 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 MRT station nearby, so conven very convenient um, in, in terms of transportations. Next, and give you some uh, sense about our campus. And this is mostly from our building. Uh, from far side, we can see a very beautiful building here. And also internally, we have a very good um, facility wise. So you can see the long hall and also about the conference room. Next. Okay, so this is the internal thing about the uh, library and it's a very famous uh, Japanese architects built. And uh, a lot of students actually see in old days and not just from so social, uh, so social science college, also from uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, students even uh, outside our campus. Okay, the next. All right. Uh, one of the features that in our building is that we uh, there are a lot of uh, activities being held. But recently now we are in the COVID, so not that much, not that many. But it used to be we have like a, a the, the festival or a, a the music a concert or you know a lot of things. So it's very good places to stay. Okay, we, we also engage in terms of the, uh, you know, civic engagement, a lot of uh, social activities are being held in this uh, college as well. Next. Okay, um, so we are going to give you some um, information about our college. So uh, next, you can go to this website. Yeah, so uh, just click the link and I cannot read the link now, but uh, uh, we will uh, ask, you can go, always go on, Line to check our website when we. We can give the uh, audience a virtual tour. Okay. The, okay. The yeah. Then then we are going to give you a virtual tour, and we are uh, yeah. I was a student in mainland China for two years, and I want to change on our screen.
I think we have technical problems. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why I'm here. Uh, did you guys share your screens? Are you guys sharing a video right now, right? Yes. Okay. Now we got it. China for two years and I wanted to change my environment. The reason I chose to come to Taiwan is because I feel that the democratic transitions in Taiwan are really important and really interesting and I can compare these transitions to other countries. I came to National Taiwan University because I was here in Taiwan for years in exchange to and then I went back to America and did a year of university in New York. It was just, I just missed Taiwan tremendously so I was open for like on that and I eventually met when I was in high school, I joined the school magazine club. And at that time, I wrote a lot of articles and reports about all kinds of social issues. I also found that I didn't understand the world well enough. During my last year in my high school, the sunflower movement breaks out and it happened right beside my school. That is the first time I realized that social science isn't just about memorizing all the historical facts or the law or stuff like that. I choose to study political science because I've been particularly enthusiastic about public affairs. My concerns for international political and economic issues and my interest in history has also reaffirmed my commitment to social sciences. Okay, we are right back. Um, we'll continue our tour by our PowerPoint slides. Yeah, again, we had difficulty. Okay, we got it. Okay. One more time, one more time. Okay, this is the organizational chart for the Social Science College. We basically have four departments, all have graduate programs, and it's political science, sociology, economics, social work. By the way, we have three independent graduate institutes for journalism, national development, as well as public affairs. Next. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, ask our students here to talk about their experiences. So firstly, why did you choose Taiwan and why did you choose Polisai? Mm, so as for me, I was studying in China for two years. I was studying Chinese and I was preparing to go to Beijing University. But um, I felt like the um, environment wasn't really fitting to study international relations. So I chose Taiwan because I wanted to study in Chinese and then I wanted this freedom and democratic environment to be able to study international relations. How about you, Jim? I, the reason I choose Taiwan actually is quite funny because <laughs> when I was in high school, I traveled to Taiwan with my, uh, with my family. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as Professor Wang mentioned before, like Gongguan is a very like, mm -hmm. there's a night market there. Mm -hmm. So we shop around there mm -hmm. and I found that the campus is just beautiful. And I was like, mm -hmm. and I told my parents that, okay, this is the university I want to attend. <laughs> so that's why I applied NTU. Okay. Yeah, just a very, yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we, uh, I mean, so what's uh, what's your um, you have been here for two years, right? right. Okay. So right. what what what's your general feeling about Taiwan? Mm -hmm. And uh, any advice for you for for the incoming op students? Um, as for the advice, I would probably. I would probably um, recommend you to study a little bit Chinese before you come here. Okay. Although everyone does speak English, but I feel like it would be nice to, you know, um, speak some basics so that you can communicate maybe with older people or, okay. um, yeah, to integrate into the environment. Okay. How about you, Jin? Yeah, I mean, to like have your Chinese language is about, will be very helpful, like mm -hmm. to integrate into the environment here and you can make friends here. Uh, more easily and attend the class like uh, yeah 
will make your study more easily. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, on our website, we do have our uh, so-called curriculum mapping. And actually, if you want to plan your study, you should think over what uh, what kind of courses you want to take, what kind of measures that you want to um, master in here. So you can always check online at http uh, colons slash slash course map dot edu. You can and find the courses, all the information is online. So I would suggest uh, to, to go on to check out before you apply Taita. Okay, um, uh, except for the uh, general information, we do have some uh, much more specific information about the uh, graduate requirement, mostly about the, which kind of course, how many of them, how many credit hours, and uh, uh, which semester you want to take. So all that the information is all on the same website. Next. Okay, um, it's, um, it, it's a map um, uh, only in Chinese, but basic telling you about uh, where our alumni, when they graduate, what kind of job and what kind of career paths they are seeking. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to say uh, our, our department policy, uh, the department I'm, I'm served, is the second largest department in, in this university. We have very broad uh, career uh, spectrums that people when they are uh, graduate. So it, it, it's really, really broad. So I, I would suggest you to check online. And we do have some information and telling you, uh, you know, in terms of ratio, in terms of careers, where they go, and uh, what, 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 what kind of achievement they, they have. Yeah, next. Um, in these two years, we doing a lot of uh, improvement in our uh, provision of courses. One of the uh, things that we are committed is to providing English course. So myself, for example, teach two English courses in next semesters, and we encourage more faculty members to teach more in course, uh, English courses to that you have more choices in other languages as well. So it's not just Chinese. We are uh, we are we are expanding. The, uh, the, the collections of our English course. Okay, uh, it's very important to understand the, uh, the graduation requirement. Um, usually different departments have uh, different requires, requirements as well. And some of the departments, they do have a sequence of courses that you need to take in orders. So all, all that kind of specific requirement, I would again suggest, suggest you to go online to check our information. Okay, next. Yeah, so I, I want to ask another set of questions. Uh, why, uh, what do you think of the workload here? And also, which courses you find most uh, interesting and inspiring? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there is um, too much. Uh, I could have graduated in three years if I really mm -hmm. wanted to. Okay. So it's not too hard. Uh, I think most of the students can make it in four years. It's not a problem. Okay. And uh, as for the courses, I feel like um, I really liked all the um, basic courses mm -hmm. that were taught, like international relations, mm -hmm. politics. Okay. Uh, although they're most basic, but I felt like they gave me most impression. And then this is something you remember for the longest time. Okay. How about you, Jean? Yeah, I think it's it's a bit hard for me to choose like one of the course that inspired me the most. Okay. Or like I really like to because actually all the students here are encouraged to take courses uh, in the other departments. So we are free to choose any courses here. Okay. So like for myself in my case because uh, uh, my research field actually is focused on welfare state comparative study mm -hmm. so i took quite some courses like in the department of social work although i'm a student of uh, graduate institute of national development how about workload workload for phd students yeah okay yeah <laughs> but still manage okay. yeah i yeah. still can manage I can generally answer. Uh, usually, <laughs> at a bachelor degree, you would take fifteen credit hours to twenty-five. About that, uh, so it's about seven, uh, six, seven, or eight courses depend on the credit hours. And but I, I think it's pretty easy. Um, for the master, mostly it took uh, take three to four courses, and sometimes you can take two. It depends on the semester you are in. And for PhD, is quite um, not many. Yeah, I mean one or two. Yeah, so. 
okay, so I want to find out why didn't plan graduate in three years? You say you can do it, right? You can um, do it. Because I'm going for exchange. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one advantage we have is study abroad program. So we are going to talk about it. Okay, so this is our study abroad program. And usually we have a lot of choice in Northeast Asia, uh, like China, Korea, and Japan. And, and we also have uh, a lot of affiliation uh, university with the, uh, Hong Kong. We have some in US and also Europe as well. Europe, Europe, a lot of people go to Germany and, 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 and Belgium and other places as well. So usually it would spend one year to the, take the opportunities to, uh, to, to do that. Okay, so we, instead of exchanging, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the program, the study abroad, we also have dual degree. And, but in each degree, there are different requirements. But usually uh, we do have undergrad, PhD, and also master as well. And it is, it's, it's a great advantage, you can explore it. Okay. So uh, you guys all have study abroad, okay? Uh, so why uh, why did you choose as your study abroad destination, and why? Mm, Taiwan. No, yeah. um, no where where you you're going to choose? Oh, 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 after after I graduate? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure yet because I have a little bit of time. But um, I was thinking um, I will probably go to uh, exchange first. Uh, go to Korea and then see if okay. I like it there better or here. So, um, Jin, have you done the study yes, abroad? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, when I was doing my MA, mm -hmm. I got a chance to exchange to Korea okay. to do my field study at the Korea University, and okay. it's quite a yeah a pretty good experience. I would okay. say, yeah. Yeah, we do provide some of the scholarship for the exchange program as well. So, uh, if your grade is, is high enough, you you have a lot of chances to get it. Yeah, so it's a great advantage. Yeah, next. Okay, research-wise, we do have a lot of research centers that in our, um, you know, the college, and they are very good in terms of publication, and they have good academic reputation. You can go online to check it. Yeah. Okay, why? What do you think of uh, doing research in NTU? So, do you plan to any doing? You only a bachelor degree, mm -hmm. right? So, so I shouldn't ask you that. But uh, how about you? Okay. Just, uh, just like I mentioned before, like I got a chance to exchange to Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a pretty good chance. And yeah, actually, uh, after finishing my MA, mm -hmm. I also managed to join a research project. Mm -hmm. It's about the promotion of the human rights of people with disabilities. And okay. in the project. Uh, we have a lot of chance like to collaborate with the government mm -hmm. and also the civil societies like uh, NPOs, NGOs. Okay. And yeah, a very, um, I, I would say I'm quite lucky and also happy to join that project because I never thought of continuing my education before okay. when after I finished my MA. But one day and I just like, okay, it seems like I want to learn more and yeah, maybe I can give it a try. So that's why I apply for my PhD program now. Okay. Yeah. The message here I want to convey <laughs> to you is that we have great research environment. So that's the point. Right, next. Oh, so we welcome you asking any question, but I think we only have one minute left, right? Oh, we have now 10 minutes. We, we still have 10 minutes. Okay, great. Then we, um, yeah, yeah, I, I think we uh, open up the floor for you to, if you want to ask me any question, ask our any questions, just um, just do it right now. Yeah. There are some backup questions here. Hi. Hi. Um, moving on to our Q&A session right now. Yes. Um, yes. See the comment. We have a couple questions with us. Do you guys see the comment? Sure. Uh, I didn't see the comments. Um, on the we, right on the screen. We have one from. Okay. 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 How common is it for students? Okay. Um. Well, generally, in terms of a competitive, I mean, uh, if you want to apply our study abroad programs, um, we have two routes. The first is to, through the channel uh, university-wise. Uh, in that regard, it's much more competitive. Um, 
But in our college, we also providing uh, from our college, uh, you know, initiated study abroad program. That would be a much more easier. But so in terms of application, it's not that hard. But uh, in terms of getting scholarship, there are some competitions over there, especially uh, about the proposal, about how you, uh, you know, the, the grades and how you framing, uh, you know, why you going to do that uh, exchange program. So that would, uh, I would say, uh, maybe, I think one out of four, uh, you you will have chance. So so that that that's about it. But it will change every year. There will be different, you know, the the pool in terms of student supply and all, as well as the amount of scholarships. So so uh, in, in in short words, uh, it's very uh, relatively easy to. Uh, to to get a study abroad uh, program, but it's relatively hard to get the yeah, financial citizenship. Okay, we are going to take uh, next uh, questions. Do you offer scholarship for students to start? Yes, yeah, definitely. I, I just covered that. Uh, it's relatively, uh, I mean, competitive. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you have any program conducting English in college social science? Yes, we right now this this semester, this this upcoming semester, we have eight. Used to be have three or four, but we are expanding. And I think we our English uh, our econ department they offer a dozens of courses because uh, I, I think they are aiming to provide a full uh, the English collection in order to have a mass uh, bachelor degrees for our econ department, but not complete yet, but uh, they, they are working for it. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, I think dual degree uh, in terms of application, each department, they will go through different process. Uh, but nowadays, I think uh, recently is relatively easy. Um, uh, usually dual uh, Degree program require you have uh, extra language skill, and you got to have more preparation in terms of uh, intellectual works. And uh, what I heard right now is that the uh, and and there are some countries they are really, really competitive. For example, like in Japan or in China, uh, I think they are generally working much harder uh, than still in Taiwan. So well. Uh, Dual degree problem generally is, is, is easy to apply and uh, depends on uh, which school you apply and uh, uh, admission rate it varies. And, but I think it's, uh, it's doable and it's relatively easy here. Uh, is, is a public choice? Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's definitely a public choice. I, I think a lot of incoming students in their uh, freshman years have already aiming for uh, taking the dual degree program, but not all of them can uh, can finish, especially like in Japan, because the language requirement is quite high. Okay, uh, have Thai university exchange? Oh, we yeah. have one. Uh, yeah, we, we do have one. Uh, well, we do have one. Uh, 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 yeah. Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. uh, Chiang Mai University. Uh, sorry, I cannot really pronounce very good Thai. But anyway, we do have one choice uh, right now for the, uh, the exchange program for Thai. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? You can actually uh, you can actually look up our partner institutes in our OIA website, and we have six hundred eighty-three exchange programs exchange program. So I believe there is bound to be a, a Thai university or a few that has a partner in uh, Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's university. We also have our college, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 um, the exchange program as well. Yeah. And we have another one from Xin Chen. What department in your college has the most okay. benefits? Uh, I, I got I need assistantship. Uh, how you know which 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 department has most the uh, exchange oh, students? Okay, that's the department <laughs> I have. Uh, yeah, because we are not administrative uh, staff, we we lack of statistics here. But I, I got to tell you, for the English course I have, I have one course uh, seminar on East Asian Democratization program. 
out of 15, probably I have a 12 or uh, ex either exchange student or, or foreign students. Um, so I, I think the rate is quite high. Nowadays, what I see is a, a nearly like one fifth of the students are international students. And where are they coming from mostly? I think uh, we do have a lot of Asian incoming, uh, you know, the international student, mostly from Japan, mostly from South Korea, Malaysia, and also Hong Kong as well. We, we do have some from China. And international-wise, I think once in a while we will see from Russia, we also from Europe, and also America as well. Yeah. Um, and maybe you know much more, right? Because uh, you are international student. You, 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 you. <laughs> do you think there, there, there's a lot of uh, student here international? Well, not right now because COVID, because of COVID nineteen. COVID? But okay. usually, yes, there are a lot. Okay. Especially, you can see them in the English courses because okay. they must be. But do you know many? I mean, how how many from Europe that you uh, acquaint with, acquainted with? No? Not so no? many. Not yeah, so usually, many. I, I I know those uh, who speak good Chinese and are very okay. integrated because we mostly uh, attend Chinese classes. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, have foreign study? Uh, yeah, a foreign study. I, I think we do have a, like an exchange um, a program and, and do a degree, but also we have research program as well. I, I think there are some centers, they do providing the chances that student can do short-term visit um, and, and doing some, you know, project-based works that's that's that that's possible. Uh, uh, but mostly it's through the exchanging or dual degree formats. Yeah. And a foreign study. I mean, do you mean the uh, in terms of uh, course or research-wise? Of course, in poli sci, one of the big uh, subfield for us is international relation as well as area studies. So a lot of professors, their specialty actually is uh, covering the, uh, the, the the global arena. So all the regions are covering our policy department as well. Okay, any question? Do you provide any scholarship for international if applying for postgraduate? Yes, yes, we do have a scholarship, scholarship for international. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe she can say something. Yeah. Yeah, just. Like you have to work hard to get yeah. a pretty good grade, and that's why you can get the scholarship. Like, well, in my case, I got a full scholarship for first three years for okay. my PhD program, and yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I would say, uh, still, it's competitive, and not everyone has that. And once you have that, they were checking your grades on second and third year to see whether you're continuing to have that scholarship. So again, you got to work hard and it's competitive. All right, that's uh, all of our questions for today. We have a minute and a half left. Oh, one just popped up. We have... Okay, sure. Do sociology students go to do social work with the same opportunity like Department of Social Work? I think there are two uh, different departments. They used to be one 20 years ago, but they separate. So sociology right now, if you want to join any like school uh, department of social works program, you can do it. Uh, but uh, in terms of course requirement, in terms of training, in terms of they are uh, independent programs. Um, so my point is that the, uh, if you wanted to do the uh, uh, to do the social work, there will be specific program that develop and asking students to do inside the department of social work. And in terms of sociology, they are. Um, um, usually not part of it. But but there's some chances. I see a lot of uh, sociology students also later on to do this, uh, this uh, uh, Department of Social Works the, uh, in the program. So it's doable, but not uh, generally not mandatory or required. OK. And I think that's, that's it for today for this morning session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. And Arslan and Jin. Bye. And now for our morning session, we will be taking a short break. For we'll be taking a short lunch break right now, and we'll be back in around an hour in our afternoon sessions, where we will have our other webinars from other colleges. See you then. See you guys. Bye.